Hey, cold cats. It's Paul from the Magic Word. Hi, it's Rob. Rob's here too, and we are talking about the legends that aren't a part of a cycle from Jumpstart, <laughs> uh, and they are not color balanced. We have two blue, a black, and two red legendary creatures. And so I'll just jump in and say why I think they did this is when I was looking through all the Jumpstart cards, uh, white has the most new cards, so that's why they didn't print another legendary for white. For green, green has the most expensive reprints in Crater Hoof Behemoth, Oracle of Moldiah. Green's just loaded in this set, so um, those two co uh, colors didn't get extra legendaries. So we're gonna look at the the non cycle legendary cycle and i'll kick us off no i'm gonna let rob do it because it's the mill card go, yeah. go rob. Oh, you, oh okay oh dear it's bruvac or brovac Bro. the, <laughs> the uh, grand grandiloquent mm. bruvac the grand diloquent no one's ever gonna say that last word okay anyway it's bruvac we're just, we're just gonna keep him as bruvac um he's cheap he's only two and a blue and it's a 1-4. He's got a big butt. He is a human advisor. So those people who love their advisors. With this ability, though, if an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead, which is nice because now they've finally keyworded mill after how many years <laughs> of people just using it that way. Yeah. Uh, mill, for those that are just learning magic, that means to take the top card of your library and put it into your graveyard. So it's kind of like it just gets wasted. So it's kind of like you're grinding cards off of your library. So you're milling them. Yeah. Part of the card that you didn't describe. Oh, the flavor text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, da, da, da. And furthermore. Da, da, da. So you're just being, you're pulling your hair out, just listening to this guy drone on and on. Yeah. And in the art, he's reading this big, huge, long scroll. He's filibustering for. He's getting filibuster counters. He's a, until you until you die from boredom. He's a persistent so. petitioner. Yep. So, <laughs> so on the topic of having an empty library, we're going to look at the next creature, which is Ormos, the Archive Keeper. So this is a legendary Sphinx that costs four and two blue. It's a five-five with flying, and if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead. You, so you don't lose. Instead, you get five one one counters on it. Um, you can also pay two blue and one to discard three cards with different name and draw five cards. It's a lot. So, of draw. yeah, I think this. I would not play this as my general because it's it's super focused on what it wants to do, and I think it would be pretty hard to get to that point where you have no cards in your library if you set up. If you set yourself up to have no cards in your library and someone just destroys or bounces your general and then you just lose, like that would suck. But if you just have this card in your deck because its final ability is just really good, like discarding three to draw five is really good, on the off chance that you're playing against a mill deck and they <laughs> mill your library and, and then you get five counters on your Sphinx, like that's really good. That's how I see this card <laughs> being played. I don't know if you see it any anything that I'm missing. It it's not gonna, you know, dethrone Laboratory Maniac for the no library win condition. Like it's not. Or the, the the new Jace. It's not so much the first ability, but it's the drawing ability that's gonna keep your hand full of gas. Right. Kind of sucks when you're drawing all those islands, unfortunately, but it's not hard to have three cards with different names in each game. Right. This so. is one of the other decks that you will see people playing Islands and snow-covered islands at the same time. Oh, that's a good way around it. Yay! It's time for Tiny Bones, the Trinket Thief. You get a Skeleton Rogue for one and a black, and it's a one-two creature, so very tiny. They weren't. That's not a misnomer. It's a <laughs> tiny. Um, at the beginning of your uh, oh, at the beginning of each end step, if an good. opponent discarded a card this turn. You draw a card, and you lose one life. So it's kind of like end of turn Phyrexian Arena. Nice. It also has the activated ability for four black black. 
each opponent with no cards in hand loses 10 life. That's a lot of life lost. <laughs> Tiny bones. I like the card drawing at the end of every turn. It's I like really that it's good. cheap. It's going to it's going to make sure that your hand is filled. I think discard strategies have not traditionally been good in EDH because once you get someone to no cards in hand, all your discard cards don't do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. A way to get around that is instead of being stuck with a bunch of discard cards in your hand, now you're actively drawing more every turn possibly to to keep seeing action through your deck. I don't know. I like that it's cheap. I like cheap generals, ones that can die and be cast, recast without being too much of a pain. I don't know about the activated ability. I don't know how easy it is to get a player's hand down to zero. What is it? There's my slicer. There you go. That so, would be great in this. Everyone's just like, it, it, that just like personally for me, that just seems kind of mean because like, oh, here's my poor opponent. They have no cards in hand. Okay, I'm going to rub some salt in your wound and now you lose 10 life. It's like, oh. So. No, I see it like the salt is the <laughs> making them discard all their cards and his second ability is, okay, now I can actually end the game. Like, I don't, I'm not just going to beat you to death with my one, two skeleton. Like, <laughs> I need a way to actually finish the game and I have that built in. It ties into his flavor text. I think it says, uh, big distractions mean tiny nuances can slip by unnoticed. So the tiny nuances is his first ability. That's going to draw you a lot of cards. And if people are only paying attention to that, that big, each opponent loses 10 life, that's not the scary part of tiny bones. The scary part is that you're going to be able to draw once every turn, potentially. All right. Next up, we have Muxus, the Goblin Grand D. It is, oh, it's a noble. You get a Goblin Noble. It looks very noble in his throne. Um, for four red red, you get a four four. When Muxos, Goblin Grandee, enters the battlefield, reveal the top six cards of your library. Put all goblin creature cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them onto the battlefield. Woohoo! And then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. But wait, there's more. Whenever he attacks, he gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each other goblin you control. So it's just like, oh, cheer me on, guys. It's kind of like Goblin Exalted. <laughs> <laughs> and Goblin is the only tribe that has a card like Goblin Recruiter, which lets you stack the top of your library. <laughs> it's crazy. <sighs> and then he can actually swing in for potential a lot of damage with his second ability. Oh, yeah. Dang. I like him. He looks like fun. That's what goblins should be. Goblins should be chaotic. They should be fun and funny. So hopefully, you know, you can have like a random mix of goblins that you're getting for free every time. In red, are there re repeatable ways to get him on and off the battlefield? There is an artifact, but not in red. Oh, okay. I yeah, I was thinking there's like Voyager staff. That's one way I could think of uh -huh. just to get like a free little boop boop. He could come goblins. out of the conjurer's closet every turn. Oh, there you go. He is pretty grand. He looks like fun times. He's expensive, yeah. but I think it's worth it's worth the six mana. So we got the last one. It's Zerzoth, the Chaos Rider, for two and a red. Legendary Devil. I think this is the first Legendary Devil. Uh, when an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, you get a 1-1 one, one Devil with uh, when it dies, you can do one damage to anything. And then whenever one or more devils you control attacks one or more players, you and those players each draw a card, then discard a card at random. I like that they made a legendary devil. It's kind of funny. His I don't goat. know if it's good. <laughs> I just like his goat that he's like riding. Uh, uh -huh. oh, if that gets its own card, that would be even better. I like the I like that he's cheap. I like that he can come in and then start swinging automatically, especially like early game when people are playing their mana rocks or they're trying to sculpt their hand. So they're trying to like play cantrips or they're cycling cards they don't need. Yeah, cycle during the end, my end step and give me a devil while you're at it. It's right. Cool. <laughs> and when you're attacking, I like how it encourages you to attack. Uh, most devil cards they do something when they die, like 
they'll like die, they do one damage. So it's nice right. that you're okay. I have these tokens, they're gonna get me a card, they're going to get me some more devils because I'm gonna be attacking you, and you're gonna draw a card when it's my turn, giving me more devils. So I'm gonna be cycling through my devils, hopefully pinging things, keep your tokens under control, uh, maybe just do incremental little slights of damage to you. And then you discard a card at random. So you blue players out there, they're trying to sculpt your hand right. or assemble your combo pieces. You got to act quick because there's a chance you're going to discard it at random. That's a good point. Uh, he, can, he comes down early and he can attack and just start messing with people. Depending on what other red cards you have, if you have your Surly Badger Soar out, yes! <laughs> he'll be even better. Uh, you don't know what your Badger Soar is going to do. Right. It's, it's, you're discarding at random, but you know it's going to be good. It's no always going to be good. He works very well with, you know, people are always like, when you're thinking of red and card draw, you're thinking the wheels. Like you cast a wheel, you're getting a fresh hand, plus you're getting doubles because everybody else is like refreshing their hand. Oh, right. I was thinking uh, Winds of Change. It's like it's a sorcery for a single red. That's like right. everyone puts their hand on the bottom, draws that many cards. So for one red, you're going to get like X doubles where X is the number of opponents you have. Yep. That's good. Plus you're messing with people's hands. Plus you're hopefully casting this when like you want to draw something better. So... Oh, Winds of Change, Winds of Chaos. So which one's your favorite, Rob? Oh, I kind of like the devil. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I think he's funny. Muxos, I just like him because of his art. He's like, oh. Mill, I think, is just a little mean, so I'm going to stay away from that one. But I like Chaos Rider. I like it when it forces people to interact. So you can't just stay there and try and sculpt your hand. You have to get in to this game and start, like, interacting. You have to deal with the devil. Da, da, da. 